Well, it's hot. It looks very hot. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> it's the coconut shredder all over again. Hello everyone, we are Sorted Food. This is Chef Ebers. This is the returning chef, James Curry, and they are going to be reviewing some antique kitchen gadgets. From when you were a boy. Look! <laughs> Straight that, away. Is that joke still going? Okay, chefs. You can open your eyes. <laughs> oh. Number one, please lift the cloche. Do the honors, James. Ta-da! Looks much the same as it did with the cloche on it. Oh. Well, I've... I've seen one of these before, but not for a long time. I've also seen one of these before. Doesn't mean I know what it is, but... Copper-based, so that it can hang in your kitchen and look shiny until use, and then when you do use it, it's very much for a celebration, I should imagine. Would you like to take a guess? Something to cook fish in. Fish kettle. Yes, you're absolutely right. This is a copper fish kettle. We believe it's French and therefore a poissonnier and we think that this dates back to the late 1800s. So guys, a fish kettle, what on earth is that? It's Your chef. It's a nice sounding bit of kit. A thing you cook fish in. Okay, helpful. Whole fish more specifically, hence the long thin shape. So an excerpt from Household Management, the 1865 edition, says that fish kettles are made in an oblong form and have two handles with a movable bottom pierced full of holes on which the fish is laid and on which may be lifted from the water by means of two long handles attached to each side of the movable bottom. This is to prevent the liability of breaking the fish as it would be if it were cooked in a common saucepan. Have either of you used one of these in the past? I think my parents still have one. I'm sure I've only ever cooked a salmon once in it. Would you like to give it a go? Yes. Indeed. Great. We put in a specific order for a fish to fit the fish kettle, and that's what turned up. It's essentially a whale. So um, <laughs> let's get Free Willy out of the way and get you some ingredients. Okay, so you have some reasonably sized fish, some ingredients. Um, boys, knock up a court bouillon and tell me what it is. Like a stock. Like a stock. A splash of white wine vinegar with water and aromats. Lemons, peppercorn. With some parsley and parsley stalks. Basically lots of flavour so that when the fish goes in and around it, you're also helping to flavour and season the fish. Stick on a lid and gently poach. So we'll leave that on in the background. Let's move on, we'll come back to it in a bit. Number two, lift the cloche. Ta-da! I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is too. <laughs> it's an old school set of scales or ba a balance. Yep, complete with weights at the very front. It's very cool. It's in ounces. Ovs. Ovs. Or Oz, should I say. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> so these are scales from the Libra Scale Company London. We believe that these date to the early 20th century, so the early 1900s. Should we knock up a, a waffle batter? A waffle batter? A sorted waffle batter that's gonna require conversion. Yes. In order to use these. Eight ounces of flour. Nice and easy because we've Seems got- Seems like a lot compared, like that, that is a heavy weight. Eight ounces is 200 grams, right? An ounce is 25 point something grams. Oh, 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 oh! So who knew this could be so, oh no. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. You wouldn't want to be doing it on a windy day, would you? That is it, that is perfect. Let's see how accurate it was. So what are you looking for? We're looking for eight ounces and we got- Oh, it's bang on! 7.8. So that is near enough to a tolerance I'm very happy with. Nice That's done, pretty good. We're gonna go 40 grams of unsalted butter, so 1.4 ounces. <laughs> Troubles you can't take out with a pour. Oh! Yeah, that's it. That's it, you don't want it, Ted. One and a half ounce, we reckon. So 0.2, that's 12.5% tolerance. Happy We're going fine yeah. for waffles. Happy? Yeah, I mean, for a waffle batter, it makes very little difference. 450 of whole milk. So the milk's into three whisked eggs and the butter. Did we put our bicarb in? No, we haven't done bicarb yet. Half a teaspoon. After all that, 
I know. Literally. And he just painstaking, painstaking measurement. Eyeballs the bicarb. Wet into dry. So, what are your thoughts with regards to the usage of the scales? Love them. You love them. Love Be them. Better than most of the gadgets we've reviewed. <laughs> I like the fact that even those stack nicely. I think it's just very elegant to look at and it works quite elegantly. It's beautiful. If you want that analog experience, you know, be at one with the food, put your record player on. This is, this is it. Would you like a brief history of the kitchen scale? Yes. Yes. Ancient civilizations documented back to the Egyptians were using counterweight scales similar to these. They would they'd be more on the sort of T bit. Do you know what I mean? Like the T frame, pivot. the pivot. Then, Richard Salter, in around 1770, Salter off of the digital make of scales that still exist now, invented the spring scale. So he then used gravity to calculate the weight as defined by Hooke's law, which determines the displacement of force on the spring. Just in case you're for you, as opposed to equilibrium. And then the digital scale, it's unclear, but in 1980, Richard Loshborough and Edward Pryor were the first to request a patent for the digital scale. So we think the digital scale started coming in from the early 1980s. I feel yeah. like it's, the, it's one of those useful vintage gadgets that will probably remain on set because it looks good, even though we won't actually ever weigh anything because it's not as efficient as the methods we have now. Yeah, I'll never be using them, but it's, it was fun. It was definitely fun. Now, all of these were purchased from auction websites, not just eBay. Some actual proper Kitchenalia antique websites. So would you like to hazard a guess at how much I paid recently for this set of scales? Hazard a guess. I'm not really up to date with the scale market. I reckon I would bid up to £75 for this piece of history. I'm going to double it. I'm going to say 150 Oh, wow. You have overestimated me. I paid 40 quid. Oh, oh bargain. You want to stick bargain. it back on eBay and we'll bid with it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do you want to buy them off me? Fish kettle came up to just below simmering, poaching temperature, and then we switched it off. And the thing with the copper pot is the whole thing gets and stays really, really hot, so it's nicely insulated as well. Oh, how are we looking? Just needs to cool down now before we tuck into it. Beautiful flesh. And if it is nicely poached and perfectly cooked, you should be able to take all the bones out in one. Well done. Emma's, what on earth is that lemon? That's a dinosaur lemon. But it's basically what lemons used to be before. They're now bred to be less of this and more of this. Chin chin on the trout. Good. It's nice that you, you just taste the fish. That's it. It's a very classic way of cooking, but that's not to say you couldn't put all sorts of spices and flavours into that broth if you wanted to impart more flavour into the fish. Do you care how much I paid for this one? If it was brand new, it'd probably set you back 120 quid. So second hand. Antique. 82. Slice of history, 82, James. 40. 40 pounds. 109 pounds, 88. Oh my God. Oh. You paid for it's that. It's not nearly as fun as the scales. There you go. It's not as nearly as fun as the scales. We have an app. It's called Sidekick. And yeah, we bang on about it a lot, but that's because we think it's really good. It gets three phenomenal, easy to make dinners from just one shopping list of ingredients and thousands of you are already using it. It also is completely free for 30 days. And to make the most of that mm. trial and so that you can really test it out properly, we've put together the Sidekick Challenge. Three meals is all it takes and we explain everything in a full run through demo of the app and why we think it's so clever. Click the link below to find out everything. Okay, chefs, lift the cloche. <laughs> oh! Freshly oiled. Because I it is stiff. I think I know what it is. Do you know what it is? It's a crank of sorts that moves a paddle. Give it a go. Churner. Yeah. Butter. For butter, presumably. Absolutely correct. This is a butter churn. This was made by Bayard, a French company and dates to the late 1800s. So you're absolutely right. The fact that it still turns, albeit with a little bit of a glitch here and there, I think it's relatively well made. Like the scale, it's quite satisfying. Mentions of butter churning can be dated back to the sixth century AD in Europe. And the crank barrel butter churn was seen as one of the leading agricultural innovations of that time. 
We have disinfected and cleaned all of these gadgets. However, this has a rusty rod. So I don't think we want to be preparing and then eating food from this. For the sake of history, shall we knock some up? Can you fill us in a little bit about how you would make butter? Beat, whip, agitate, dairy that's got high fat, so something like cream, until basically the fat separates from the buttermilk and you end up with butter. Shall I? Yeah. Go on, arms. Do the honours. Crank away. It's making a very satisfying noise. Nice techers, Evers. Let me look, see if it's changed at all, because in theory, it needs to turn into cream, whipped cream, like a foam before it turns into a, yeah. My word. We are, we are far away. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get the sand mixer out? Let's be honest, your arms are better than mine. Not right now. It's been 14 minutes. <laughs> We're all knackered, we've all had a turn. We've definitely split the cream. We haven't yet got butter. Well done, James. It's hydrophobic enough that all it wants to touch is itself. 16 minutes. Yeah, it's getting really stiff. <laughs> I think we're done. Oh, we've got separation now. Yeah, we've got meat. We've got buttermilk. Yeah, it's been to clean the sides of the. Oh. I think we've got butter. Yeah, well done. Should we try and massage some butter? 20 minutes that took. Oh, you're going in. You're so He's going brave. in. He's going in. The chef's made butter. You need to kind of wash it in ice cold water, and that sets the butter. Now, obviously, I have no idea what these were selling for at the time. But would you like to hazard a guess at how much I paid for it on an online auction? I imagine the only people really buying these are people who are looking to preserve a slice of history. So, again, you kind of pay what's required. What did we pay? 60 quid? 30 quid? 75 pounds. Again. A rusty one of these. Not as fun as the scales. Chef's final one, number four, lift the clock. I can't imagine what's at this end of that. <laughs> it's, it's your turn. It's your turn. Oh! Huh? Wonderful. It's an old school, oh, I was going to say a waffle lion esque thing, but with an imprinted floral scene. Well, this was advertised as a waffle slash pancake plate. Bit of a waffle history. Um, we think that we can trace the beginning of waffles back to ancient Greece, actually, Ebers, where they made flat wafers made from flour, milk or water and sometimes eggs called oblios. I'm so sorry for the pronunciation, which were cooked between two metal plates. In the 13th century, sugar and spices were added and then craftsmen began embellishing the metal cooking plates with designs ranging from family crests, landscapes, religious imagery. Before the Dutch in the 15th century, started using rectangular crisscross plates, which we are now familiar with. So because of the pattern on that, we think that it might be some sort of batter-based cooking device with a nod back to the old school, very old school way of making waffles. Hence why you made a weird waffle pancakey batter previously using the scales. Please tell me not brushing at our cast iron device with homemade butter. <laughs> As with many of these devices from this era, they require heating over a very hot stove or flame. Hence why Ebers, we're using your camping stove again. <laughs> we're looking at the Victorian era, specifically the mid to late 1800s. Well, it's hot. It's, it looks very hot. It's pretty hot. Um, maybe I'll wait to put butter on it. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> it's the coconut shredder all over again. Ben, it's not worth it, mate. Ben, 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 Ben. Ben, it's not worth it. Ben, 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 Ben. Stop, stop, stop. Ben, 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 I don't like it. Step back, don't like it. We've tested it. Little brushy brush. Like that much? Yeah. Who knows? That's good, right? Who knows? I like these kind of experiments. And then we clamp down. That's quite hot. 
We don't know what this really is for. We can't, we can't find out. So if you guys know, if any of you are food historians and can give us a heads up, please let us know in the comments. Yeah. Should we try it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's try do it. it. Let's try it. Oh yes, yes. Going in, Ebbers. Can you see any of the pattern whatsoever? <laughs> it's not particularly clear. Cheers. Tastes like crispy batter. Because it is an unflavoured batter, we could have put vanilla in the batter in hindsight. It's all right. Actually, when you eat it, it tastes more substantial than it looks. I'd never make them again, but I'm glad I have today. I, I, like, I like it. It's quite hard to get that same thing, like a very crisp wafer. You didn't have the same satisfaction as I did of the tss, yeah. just, It feels good. Would you like to know how much of our money I spent on this? I've bought a cast iron waffle thing on the end of a long stick before for a fire and that was about 40 quid. So I'm going to say this has got the fancy pattern, 42? 50. 74 pounds 95. You've been spending a lot of our money on a history lesson, which I'm normally up for and today has been fun. Do you know what I like about these videos? I like when we do stuff that we would never ever do if we weren't trying to make a video. Prime example, I would happily have all four of those vintage gadgets in my kitchen for display purposes only if I had a big country kitchen with enough space. Agree. Well, you've heard our chef's thoughts. Why don't you let us know your opinions in the comments down below? And firstly, if you know what that weird waffle irony thing is actually for, let us know. And have you seen any other vintage or antique gadgets from history that you would like us to try and get hold of and review? I ran out of time. Oh God! When I what was are you doing? in Malmo, but I wanted to go to the disgusting food museum.